everyone. Welcome back to the three-hour news show and our signature segment, See the Stories. Now, Indonesia is one of the countries with an abundance of maritime assets, which includes 6.32 million kilometers of sea made up of archipelagic and territorial waters, as well as an exclusive economic zone. Yes, Indonesia has plenty of potential as a maritime country, ranking second in terms of maritime commodities behind China. Indonesia is a renowned maritime country since the nation has a large marine territory. Indonesia's maritime area itself stretches for 6.32 million kilometers, consisting of archipelagic and territorial waters, as well as an exclusive economic zone. In 2016, the State of World Fisheries and Agriculture claimed that Indonesia was ranked second in terms of marine commodities volume behind China. Indonesia is also the seventh major source of agricultural products. This certainly means that Indonesia has much potential in the fisheries sector. So how come does Indonesia have so much fish? Well, some came from the ocean while the rest are bred. Captured fisheries commodities is the volume of wild fish landed for commercial, industrial, recreational and other purposes. I bet you have eaten chakalang or skipjack, right? It is one of the most commonly captured fish in Indonesia. Other commonly caught fish are eastern little tuna, shrimp and regular tuna along with several other species of fish that we often consume daily. Fish breeding is commonly called aquaculture. It involves breeding freshwater, brackish and saltwater fish in controlled or semi-natural conditions. The government also expects aquaculture to play a major role as an economic pillar, which supports national food security. There are various aquaculture commodities with at least half of them commonly found and consumed daily. Some examples are shrimp, goopers, Nile tilapia, common carp, milkfish, Asian sea bass, catfish, giant gourami, shells, seaweed, and more. Meanwhile, 65% of Indonesia's aquaculture commodities are seaweed. Data from the Marine Affairs and Fisheries Ministry indicate that both captured and aquaculture fisheries commodities are spread almost equally in provinces across Indonesia. However, the largest contributors of fisheries commodities are Bangka Blitung, Dekai Jakarta, and Papua. While the largest aquaculture fisheries are found in East Nusa Tenggara, North Kalimantan, and South Sulawesi. This means that fishery can become one of the main sources of income for the country, which can bring much benefit to society. I mean, come on, did you see those fish? Yeah, yeah. amazing. Those fish. Mm. Yo, that's a very, like, very big like, potential market for Indonesia yep. Yep. in this case. But uh, not lots of uh, parties could actually give educations to uh, the farmers uh, uh, all around Indonesia. And as we know, there are many kinds of fish in Indonesia that can be consumed. These included uh, those from freshwater and seawater, so like uh, two. Yes. Um, and this fish have high economic value if cultivated properly. Now, speaking of fish, one startup in Indonesia called eFishery has launched um, an innovative solution in aquaculture to maximize fish harvest. eFishery successfully introduced changes in the country's aquaculture industry with its smart fish feeder. This innovation also allowed people to perform cultivation activities as well as access to the markets. And to talk more about it, we are now connected with eFishery CEO Gibran Huzaifa from Bandung now. Hello Gibran! First things first, we would like to say congratulations. Wait, hold on, let's check if he's here. Or is it connected with us? One second. <laughs> because Hi. it's a congratulatory yeah. message. He's there. He's there. Oh, Gibran is Gibran, there. There Hi. you are. Gibran, thank you so Hi. much for joining us. First of all, congratulations on securing $90 million in funds from various global companies. Congratulations. And thank you so much for thank being you. here so because we heard that you had some challenges. Um, the electricity I went off. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And now, um, as, just to get you into context, now Gibran is using the headlamp from the car. Thank you wow. so much, man. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. 
So now, Gibran, uh, please tell us, what do you think of Indonesia's current fishery industry? Yeah, thanks a lot. Really glad to be here. And I think, to be honest, this is the most uh, exciting and interesting uh, sightings of all of the interviews that I've had. So oh. it's just very special. <laughs> uh, for, <laughs> for the fishery industry, it's, it's, it's amazing. I think the fishery industry in Indonesia currently contributing to close to $30 billion US, US dollar uh, for uh, the country's GDP, which is uh, roughly uh, close to 3% of the country's GDP mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to put it in context, Indonesia is the second largest fish producer, sorry. but just to put it in context, for freshwater fish, mm -hmm. we're actually producing 30%, which is one third of the total global wow. freshwater fish. Wow. So we're, we're really big uh, fish contributors and seaweed contributors and, and so forth. But particularly in, in aquaculture, uh, aquaculture is the fastest growing food sector in the world. Mm -hmm. And Indonesia is one of the fastest growing food sector in aquaculture mm -hmm. uh, in the whole world as well, because we have very massive opportunity in aquaculture. Now, speaking of uh, aquaculture, how much potential can it contribute to Indonesian fish industry, let's say, in five to ten years? It, it would be amazing, because currently uh, Indonesia, Indonesia is the the second longest coastal line, but mm -hmm. in terms of the coastal line that can actually be produced for fish and shrimp and seaweed, yeah. we, we are the, the, the longest with the, the biggest potential mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. we have uh, in tropical area but when we can harvest fish and shrimp for the whole year. And we, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have a lot of water bodies, right? Even in the Kalimantan area, we, we actually have a lot of uh, rivers because it's Kalimantan, right? A true, lot yeah, of true, yeah, true, uh, true, true, there, uh, actually. So a, a lot of potential for us to produce fish, which means that, uh, and, and from the data itself, we're currently all, only utilizing 7% of the total aquaculture potential area, mm. where, where uh, currently we're already second or third largest uh, yeah. aquaculture producer in the world. Yeah. But by potential, we can be uh, the largest one. So over the next five to 10 years, I'm sure that Indonesia can be much bigger than, uh, than it is right now. Okay, talking about e-fishery, we saw from your previous interview how you mentioned that e-fishery is a fish pack. Very interesting. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is interesting and of course unique. So what's the story behind e-fishery actually? Why did you choose to build a business on this field? Yeah, yeah, that, well, that's interesting naming that we chose because a lot of people know fintech, so it's easier if we call yes, ourselves yes. fintech. <laughs> yes. But why we focus on the fish tech is because uh, back then before I started the fishery in 2013, uh, I actually was a fish farm myself. So I started ah. my own fish farm. It's a it's a lele farm. Ah, okay. uh, back catfish. then when I was in college. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, catfish. Uh, from one pond when I was graduated in 2012, I operated around 76 ponds. So wow. I, I was wow. actually sar sarjana lele, sarjana catfish. <laughs> so that's that's how I I uh, actually uh, uh, got to know about the potential of the industry. Mm -hmm. And in 2013, I had the idea about the technology yeah. to uh, help. Uh, the sector and all of the farmers uh, around the sector uh, to foster. So that's why I, that's when I started e fishery in, in, in 2013. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Now, Gibran, as we know, e fishery offers smart feeders. So it is is it only for pound fish cultivation or freshwater, or is it also for seawater fish? It's for so we started from a smart feeder. We built from a machine to feed the fish automatically, connected to smartphone, connected to sensor and sends the data to the cloud and it can be used to uh, any type of fish from mm -hmm. uh, the freshwater fish like catfish, tilapia mm. to the brackish water like shrimp. But we're currently, we have been building different kind of value chain services mm -hmm. from the data that generated through our uh, feeder and our app. Mm -hmm. So we now also offer feed marketplace and seed marketplace to the farmers. Mm -hmm. We also uh, launch our uh, the financing facilities that we work with the banks and the financial institutions mm -hmm. that we call uh, Kabayan or Kasi Bayar Nanti. Mm -hmm. So some okay. sort of like a ladder for the farmers mm -hmm. and also help the farmers connect to the buyers. Uh, so we have an app uh, using the data then we yeah. can connect the farmers to the B2B buyers and the export buyers right now. So right now it's a range of uh, solutions that we provide aside of the feeders, but it can be used to seven commodities. Now it is very interesting to talk about you and your business as well. And uh, Gibran, will you please stay right there because we're going on a break and we will know more about e-fishery and also Indonesian um, 
aqua, what you call it? Aqua, aqua culture. culture. Aqua culture potential. Don't go anywhere.